Hello, I'm Jason Arp, and uh, I'm going to give you a presentation on uh, the business personal property tax exemption legislation that uh, uh, Paul Inslee was so gracious enough to co-sponsor with me. And uh, we were going to have a vote on this in late August. Okay, let's get started. Um, the presentation is called Getting Out of the Way. That seems to be the most logical answer to our economic development issues. All right, first of all, let's um, take a look at what works. The, the Economic Freedom Index uh, is put together each year. They uh, take a look at the countries in the world um, based on some factors. Uh, the five major factors that they use are the, the size of government, that's uh, mostly taxes as a percentage of GDP. They look at the uh, legal structure, the rule of law and property rights, as well as uh, business regulation, uh, trade regulation, and sound money. Uh, this is the Fraser Institute out of uh, British Columbia in Canada uh, that does this. Uh, they cooperate with uh, economists all over the world. Well, two of those factors are not going to really play into Fort Wayne uh, city government, uh, trade regulation, and sound money, but uh, there are some things we can do about the first three items to make sure that we create a business friendly, uh, economic, economically free area. And the results of the studies that the uh, Fraser Institute has done over the last 40 years has shown the economic freedom plus the rule of law. And those two things are both needed. Um, those two things is a formula for prosperity. So how are we doing here in Indiana? Well, uh, from a taxation standpoint, um, we're very middle of the road. Um, this was a national survey done. Uh, I think it was published by Wallet Share. Um, our own uh, Andy Downs from IPFW was uh, one of the uh, contributors to this. Uh, this takes into account property tax, individual income taxes, as well as sales and excise taxes all as a share of personal income and as you can see the totals of those revenues um, on a uh, per capita type of uh, as a percentage of total personal income you can see the indiana's middle of the pack number 24. so we have a very middle of the road tax policy total income taxes in fort wayne are 4.71 percent that's a combination of the state's 3.23 percent and uh, the local income tax which uh, Fort Wayne City Council just boosted last year of 1.48 percent and Indiana ranks um, as it showed you on the prior chart uh, 24th I forgot 25th on the slide we'll make the adjustment for that uh, the average residential tax of 0 0.82 um, Indiana is 23rd lowest in residential taxes um, these are, are not necessarily bad like I said they're average middle of the road but it's not a, a beacon for migration people aren't going to come here because of our tax policies so how are we doing on the rule of law property rights issue as well uh, we've got all kinds of insider dealing at our economic development corporation we have major conflicts of interest and in major projects uh, between the executive of the, of the Economic Development Corporation and um, the uh, the developers of the projects. Um, we had arbitrary treatments of abatements and other uh, one-off tax incentives. It seems like that's the bulk of our um, economic development plan. Um, and then some businesses end up paying higher taxes some of the highest taxes actually in the country while others pay little to no tax we'll get to that last point in a moment one big positive that we have is real estate prices so we have low real estate prices that offset much of the higher taxes on property and income so we have the fifth cheapest housing market in the country um, and as far as like commercial real estate uh, office rents are uh, cheaper than any other major market as you can see here, here's the average listing of new home prices. 
and uh, you see Indiana there is fifth from the lowest. And here you have office rentals um, per square foot. You see Fort Wayne is cheaper than most. So why in the world will we subsidize real estate if we have one of the cheapest real estate markets in the country? Wouldn't it make more sense to remove actual obstacles to growth? What would be a binding constraint? The Tax Foundation works together with KPMG um, every few years to put together a uh, location survey. It takes a look at uh, doing business in different states across the country. And in the uh, 2015 iteration of this, you see that Indiana came up dead last in the country for a tax environment for capital intensive manufacturers. Again, the source of this is KPMG and the Tax Foundation. Uh, the effective rate on capital intensive manufacturers, so like if you were to think of it as an income tax percentage, would be 19.2%. Compare that to some of our neighbors, you can see Ohio at 5.1%. On uh, mature labor intensive manufacturers, uh, we're looking at 13.5%, so not a whole lot better. And you can see Michigan at 6.3%. So how, how does the business personal property tax create a bad economic environment? Well, take for instance, a company that has sales of a hundred million dollars a year with a profit margin of 10%. It would give you a profit of $10 million a year. Let's also say that they have equipment on their balance sheet that is roughly the same as the sales. And that's pretty typical for a large manufacturer. I'll say the assessor has that assessed at $40 million. So it's either been depreciated or the assessor's got a, a lower amount for it. Then your business personal property tax rate, let's just say it's 3%. Um, use nice round numbers. It gives us a tax of $1.2 million on that equipment. So if you take the tax and divide it by the total profit, that would give you an income tax equivalent of 12%. So it looks like the obstacle that we could remove would be the business pro personal property tax, which are too high. And we could also uh, work on our current economic development environment, which turns the rule of law on its head. It's expensive, inefficient, and effective. So what is bu business personal property? This is tangible property that is used to produce goods or perform services. So computers, printers, communications equipment, MRIs, CAT scans, x-rays, lab, surgical equipment, lathes, CNC, drill presses, ovens, conveyor belts, extruders, lifts, welding equipment, industrial robots. You get the point. It's all business equipment. So our ordinance, S18-0632, exempts all new business personal property from taxation. So think of it as somewhat of a super abatement for um, all new investments. The business personal property that is on the rolls will remain on the rolls until it is retired. It may take more than 10 years to retire the current stock. And this is based on um, data from the Allen County Assessor's Office um, that I was given a, a couple of years ago, actually, in 2016, when we uh, brought this up the last time. Um, based on the run rates at that time, it would have taken 15 years to, retir to retire our property. Um, and this is all made possible by um, Indiana Code 6-1.1-10.3. Uh, this was the State Senate Enrolled Act 1 passed in 2014. So this was a pretty high priority item for the Indiana State Senate. So um, taking a look at the composition of our property taxes currently, you see in blue here we have real property. Uh, the red is income taxes, uh, it's called a property tax relief credit income tax. It gets treated as property taxes. Uh, we have the actual personal property in green. Then there's a little purple sliver that's also um, income taxes, PTRC, that's treated as personal. All right, and then you see the distribution. This is where our taxes go. So this is all the 
property tax distributions. You see schools, cities and towns, county are the large ones, and then the rest of it's broken up between the township governments, the airport, city link, and the public library system. Um, this slide here gives you a lot more detail on that. Um, you can see um, how much business personal property is in each of these taxing units. Um, and you can also see in the middle of this, you've got uh, the total TIF, total abatement, total tax inducements. And then we've got this shift column and net phased in impact. So you may want to come back and reference this later if you have some uh, questions about what, uh, individual units impacts and um, what they currently are giving up through TIF or abatement. All right, so uh, another source of income for um, governmental units here is income taxes. You see the uh, property tax makes up about 70% of the taxes and 30% roughly comes from income taxes. You see the income tax allocations. Um, a fairly sizable portion of that is treated as if it is property tax. That's the PTRC. Uh, that, that stands for property tax relief credits. Um, you see the purple part is, is now just called distributed shares. So this gets treated, um, it gets sent to the general fund of the different governmental units. Um, you have the eco devo, that's what your economic development uh, is in the red there. So that's a pretty much the largest portion of our income taxes go to economic development. So that's going to be um, things that get, you know, bond payments for various um, community development projects. And then finally, in green is the smallest sliver of the income taxes goes to public safety. All right, so we, here we have the business personal property tax transition. So currently, it's roughly $56 million countywide. As I mentioned earlier, the runoff period is about uh, 10 to 15 years. We're going to use 10 in our numbers for this uh, demonstration. So 33% of that 18 million of the revenue sources will shift to real property. And so um, they lost after 10 to 15 years, when I say lost, the reduced revenue to governmental units would be about $37 million. Once this is finally phased in, um, $37 million less per year starting in, in year 10, let's say. Um, First year, you're, you're only talking about two and a half to three point seven million dollars uh, across all units in the county in the uh, first year. So um, part of that is the way that the the levy is calculated. So the, the way taxes are done, the, the units put in for a levy, the uh, auditor determines what the uh, amount that they can charge um, in, in total property taxes, and then that gets kind of applied to all the existing property. So as a business personal property is retired, the levy will force rates up on property that are below the caps. So the first year impact would be somewhere between one and a quarter and $1.9 million countywide and kind of the uh, shifting. And you that can be mitigated through changing the way that the property tax relief credits are handled. So right now we've got 3 million of that that is going to uh, reduce the taxes on business personal property. So instead what we could do there and council could change these uh, distribution percentages um, at any time. We, we get a, a window of uh, once per year to revisit these and uh, perhaps we can do that uh, to offset the impact. So we could reduce the uh, shift right there from 18 to $15 million. Um, and this could be further mitigated on uh, residential properties by um, changing the distribution of PTR credits to 3% properties. Um, instead, uh, have that amount distributed to 1% uh, properties, which would be your households. So in other words, we're taking our, go back a slide here, we're taking our um, $18 million shift and making it $9 million. So basically cutting the impact in half. So uh, TIFs 
currently we've got two different major types of tax inducements for business activity. Uh, TIF, which is tax increment financing, collects $17 million annually. The tax increment financing captures the assessment increases within the TIF district. The revenues uh, and, and the TIFs are managed by the Redevelopment Commission. So you've got an Allen County Redevelopment Commission, you get a Fort Wayne Al uh, Redevelopment Commission. And its purpose is to finance public infrastructure. So, um, you know, some, some public infrastructure that we've seen recently is the uh, HVAC system and various uh, steel uh, in, in the Skyline Tower, um, the roof for the landing building uh, was deemed to be public infrastructure. Um, my guess is you would have a difficulty as a citizen accessing these items that you've paid for these taxes. All right, um, current tax inducements also include abatements. So a tax abatement would be um, where the amount of tax that you pay in the first year is reduced um, substantially, maybe none at all in the first year, 10% the next year, um, and, and so forth till it's phased in. Uh, on a 10-year phase in, you may have a seven-year phase in or five-year phase in. Um, and some of these are not phase-ins at all. That's uh, uh, no taxes at all for 10-year period. That's called super abatement. Um, it's happened a couple times in Allen County. General Motors is, is the largest. Another one to note is the uh, cityscape flats, which is a residential apartment building uh, next to the uh, baseball diamond downtown receive super abatement. So if you look at the abatements, we abate uh, nearly $10 million of real property and $8 million of business personal property. And here you can see kind of a breakdown um, by unit. So let me kind of show you here, like here would be schools. So the Blue there would be um, TIF, and then the red is uh, abatements for real property, and the green is abatements of personal property. But if you look at a total of that, it equals a, roughly equals the amount of business personal property that we collect um, or apply to those districts. So this is what we're talking about getting rid of. Um, you know, phasing out would be the business personal property and that would be offset by reductions and abatements and tax increment financing. Here, this kind of shows an aggregate across all um, sources here. The business personal property revenues declining simultaneously you've got the increase of revenues as the existing book of tax inducements roll off so this shows in a, in a hypothetical zero growth world um, starting in a year from now for the next uh, 10 years what that would look like, and, and basically we'd be flat. The personal property is indicated in purple, whereas the inducement phase out shows an increasing of revenue in orange uh, to basically offset the loss of the business personal property. And this is what that would look like with 1% overall economic uh, growth or growth in property values, I, I should say. It's the um, assessments would going up 1% uh, per year over the next 10 year period, what that kind of looks like, and then uh, two, 2%. So you know, normal growth, um, none of what we're doing would be felt. All units would end up with a lot more money than they have currently. And this doesn't assume any actual growth in the economy due to what we're talking about. Um, I suspect if we made this that popular of a um, 
move by eliminating the business personal property tax that will have uh, tremendous economic growth, but that is not shown in any of the slides here. Um, the projected growth factor, so that's what the um, auditor will let the governmental units know for budgeting that they can expect a, th a three and a half percent increase countywide. So right now, without doing anything, they're expecting $13 million more per year starting next year just by an increase in the tax levy. So we have a simple choice. We can continue the bureaucratic micromanaging of business or create a competitive free market environment, frankly, with very little cost other to, than to the economic development corporations and, and those that make a living doing economic development work. Um, simply by just getting out of the way. Uh, thank you for listening to the presentation.